Look into my eyes. Do you see fear? You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> right between the eyes! Did you see that? Anyone? Uh, of course not. Okay, then. One more time. <laughs> tally, tally, no, no. I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. Oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, not that way. Come on. Back to your mom. Right, Philistine. Oh, wait. Right between the eyes. Oh, of course. That one you saw. Tally! Tally, no! I'm coming, girl! Shira! I will bring her home safely. I'm almost in love!
Welcome to this live stream about David, the animated feature film. We are just so excited to have you guys with us this evening, today, depending where in the world you are. Tonight, I'd like to start by just saying a very special warm welcome to the Ohana Adventure family fans because they're with us. And later this evening, we've got the incredible privilege of being able to just connect and chat with uh, the Ohana Adventure family, the Bennetts, which is just so cool to have them on, on the live stream later this evening. But welcome to their fans and to Aaron Fullen's fans as well. Thank you for joining us because I know he's cross-posted and we know that David's story is such a musical story and, and he's obviously so connected to music. So great to have his fans on tonight. The other thing I want to say is I'm not wearing this t-shirt by accident. Um, welcome to the fans of Angel Studios, just the most incredible group of people who've brought you shows like The Chosen. Um, we'll talk more about them a little bit just now as well. But um, yeah, thank you guys. And tonight, this is just so exciting. They've just put up on screen there, and it blows my mind away. This, this phase of crowdfunding, our target was $5 million. Today was the last day. There's, well, there's 13 hours left, and we've, as you can see in the top right there, we've hit $5 million, which is just absolutely incredible. It's just so electric to see that support and passion for the story of David's life. And just to say, guys, um, there is a buffer, because sometimes when people's money or investment is getting processed, so we're allowed to go $500,000 buffer above the $5 million. So tonight, if you're on this live stream and you want to perhaps get a chance to invest, you can still go to angel.com slash David, um, and then you can, you can you know, put in your money to invest, and there's potential still to be part of the offering of this offering. Um, so please do go there if you'd like to invest. There's some, some guys who are investing there. There's $100 from Dwight. Thank you. And then we'll track all the guys in a buffer. And if, if we can get you in, it'll be first come, first serve. We'll get you in. If we can't, then the money gets refunded back to you. So if you do invest and you don't get an opportunity in, it will be refunded to you. So, But so exciting that we've hit that $5 million mark. And thank you so much for everyone who's been part of that. I just want to do a quick recap, though, for those of you, because this is a question that quite often comes up on the live stream. So on this project, animated feature films take three to four years, sometimes longer to make. Um, they're an epic journey, an epic undertaking. In this film so far, we've invested $19.6 million. Okay, it's been a dream for 20 years and we've been developing it for 20 years, but it's been in pre-production for two years. And this raise, this fundraise now is $5 million. And then we're gonna go next year and do another, aim to raise another $30 million to finish the film. And all going well, we should finish the film in 2024 and release it end of 2024, perhaps early 2025, depending how it goes. But just so you know, an animated feature film is an is a epic journey. The beautiful thing about it, it's like an apple orchard. So if you water and fertilize an apple orchard for five years, you don't see one apple. So it's a long journey. But then once it starts bearing apples, you get apples for 20 years. And this is the power of animation. It can speak through decades and through generations. Um, and that's why it's worth the heavy lifting and the incredible creative effort that goes to put out an animated feature film. So we're so excited. What I want to celebrate tonight though, is this phase of fundraising, $5 million. It's incredible. And I really want to say we're so excited to partner with Angel Studios guys on the distribution side of this film because distribution is a massive part. It's one thing to make a great film. It's another thing to actually get it distributed. And I, I just love the Angel Studio guys, their integrity, their vision, the way they think out of the box. You can see what they've done in The Chosen. And we are cooking up some really cool plans because our passion is to bring this film to cinemas first and around the world, around the globe. And our goal is to make it the most watched animated theatrical film of all time. That's our, that's our vision and our goal. Um, so thank you for joining us on this adventure. Just to give you a taste of what goes into making an animation, I've got two very special guests who I'd like to invite on who are going to look at the demo you've just watched. And just, we're not going to go into too much depth, but just give you a bit of a breakdown as to the various steps that went into making that little short that you saw. It'll give you a feeling of what's going to go into the whole movie. So without further ado, I'm going to invite Brent Dawes, who's going to who's the director with me on the David and Amanda film, and Linton Levengood, who's Sunrise Art Director. So if you guys can join me on screen. Welcome, Brent. Welcome, Linton. And, and it is so, okay. thank you. Just to say, it's so, so exciting that they hit this target. It's just incredible. I can't, I can't believe it's it. Amazing. It's just so exciting. Amazing. And, and I just and love the sorry. fact that you've been saying, you've been saying over the last few weeks that each person that's putting in money is, is becoming one of the team with us. It's not just 
you know, it's not just money and then we forget about it. It's like we're, we're building a community, community and a team to go on this journey with us, which is just uh, amazing. So exciting. And for those of you who don't yeah. know Brent, um, I'll just suggest you go check out one of his movies. We directed a movie we did called Jungle Beat the Movie. And that's showing on Netflix if you want to go have a look at that. And just to say, Brent was the creator of the whole Jungle Beat brand. There's a YouTube site called Jungle Beat. We've got over 7 million subscribers. And I just mentioned that just so you can see part of our journey to getting to the David movie. Because it's always been our passion to crawl, walk, run. Um, but yeah, Brent and Linton has been with us on that journey as well. So Linton, welcome, welcome on board here tonight. Thank you so much. So glad to be here. Yeah. Brent and Linton, I'm going to let you take it away from here. And Linton, maybe you can tee up what we're going to look at tonight. The, we're going to look at, just break down quickly what we're going to look at, then you can call out the videos as you want them. So over to you for the moment, Linton. And Brent, please chime in, obviously, as we go. Ah, uh, you're trying. To sure. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So yeah, what, what we're going to look at here is uh, some videos that we put together just to give you guys a sense of what went into creating the demo. So some behind the scenes views of the art of David, the concept art leading to the final character, and as well as um, a little touch on the animation, uh, some behind the scenes of Tali and the sheep's development, and um, the, the design of the whole world, and the music as well. But we'll try and move through it quite swiftly. <laughs> So I hope you guys enjoy just getting a taste of what went into making this beautiful demo. So we're going to kick off with David. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, we're going straight into David, yes. You come at me with sword and spear, but I come in the name of the God of Israel. <laughs> All right, so what you're seeing here is some of the earliest art of David, um, the first concepts. And the goal of concept art when designing characters is, as, um, as Brent has mentioned before, is casting. So you're basically casting the character. So the artists all shoot out and they start drawing different designs for the character. And eventually the director, Brent, will, uh, who was Brent in this case, will see something in one of the artworks that really resonates with them. And in, in this demo, that image that you see there in color in the top left was the first image that Brent saw that really spoke to him as David. Um, do, do you want yeah, to say anything was, about that, Brent? Yeah, maybe we could just hop back to that, that image there. Um, because there was just something. So this is, you know, it wasn't colored, uh, colored up when I first saw it. Um, and it was a lot, a lot looser. But there was just something that I found really endearing. It's like a soft gentleness, but a, but a strength to his face there. And, and it's one of those things. It's, it's such a terrible thing to say as a director. I'll, I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> you know, what's an artist supposed <laughs> to do with that? But, but this was one of those examples of, oh, I, when I saw the image, I recognized David. And that's a really good sign to me. And it doesn't mean that that was the, the final approved um, character design it meant that they'd found an essence of a character that i really responded to and and we sort of held this image up um against everything else moving forward even though the look changed slightly it was like does it still feel do, do i still recognize david within that um and it's amazing to get that image um and in, we actually got that image reasonably early which was exciting but it took a long time to then fine tune and get him all the way there yeah, and that's what you'll see as we move forward now. Uh, the goal is to try and find that character uh, that Brent was resonating with. So the art goes into 3D. You'll see us move into 3D soon. And um, it's, it's, it's quite a journey to try and translate a 2D image that looks good into 3D. So you'll see on this page, there's a 3D little uh, versions and up, leading up to this image, which was the final version that we did in a program called ZBrush. Um, and then, yeah, it's quite a journey to like tweak the image to try and keep it looking appealing. But the, the, the whole character goes through quite a process. So you can see here the hands and feet are sculpted. Yeah. So yeah, you can see the hands and feet the character, yeah. <laughs> go Brent, go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say the, the fact that, so we found a face, but what is the style of the hands and the feet? Because 
nothing i think the thing that um, a lot of people take for granted with animated feature films is they sort of think that there's a pool of things to draw from you know every movie that you watch um unless it's a sequel even if it is a sequel they build everything from scratch a rock a blade of grass um hands fingers feet and they they try and figure out and answer the questions what does what do fingers look like in this movie what do toes look like in this movie and how do they all relate um to the rest of the world sorry go ahead carry on Anthony. Yeah, and, and especially in the demo with him climbing the cliff, we really needed to know what his hands would look like. So here you'll see some of his outfit designs. We really kind of tested a lot of things as we developed. Everything that is on David needed to be motivated. You know, why is he wearing a piece of leather on his arm? So that ended up being the sling. You know, what's, what is that bracelet? What's the story behind that? Who gave it to him? Um, we don't just kind of magically add things. We want to have a reason for adding anything to David, even down to his sandals. You can see at the top is the loose design and then the detail breakdown. Um, and here you can see all the iterations that David went through to, to get to that final, final design. Like, is he wearing the sash? Is he wearing it uh, over his shoulder? We had to test out every version of that. Um, yeah, so that's a, a behind the scenes look at, at what got us to the final look of David. And um, if you move on to the next video, you, what you'll see is um, the process of taking this 3D character into animation. Uh, of course not. Okay then, one more try. Sure. So I reckon just pause it here. Um, when yeah. you take the character into animation, uh, when it's a 3D, you can approve a 3D model and you can, from this, from that pose and that expression, it can look fantastic. But when, once it's got its rig, which is the, the, the tools that the animators use to move it around, the skeleton and what have you, it, it can very quickly and, and actually without question will, will lose appeal because, uh, you know, from different cam camera angles, the, the way that you open a mouth, uh, it, it was a significant job to make sure that the, the appeal of the concept art and that character that I recognized was able to come across um, in the performance. So th the animators have one job to do to, to bring a character to life and, and get the pacing and the timing right. But there's a whole nother layer uh, of crafting that goes on after the performance is done to bring him on model and and that's what's being shown here these draw overs so the the artist would go over um frame by frame or um and anything that looked wrong they would draw over and the animators would then uh, or tech anim would go in and try and fix some of this linton i don't know if you want to you're welcome to move the, the video on or say anything else here yeah just to say that, yeah, the one major thing we learned during the production of this is that uh, character design isn't finished until animation is finished. You know, like uh, there's this whole shepherding of the design process uh, in animation just to ensure that we get the maximum appeal uh, as we move into animation. But yeah, you've already said it so well, Brent. Like, uh, yeah, so that's what this, this little clip shows. So you can keep playing and then we'll go on to the next video. Yeah. So yeah, you're just seeing the pose and then the draw over and the notes that the artist gave. So our, our lead character designer gave these notes. All right. Tally, Tally, no! I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. So the the very popular Tali is a, one of our favorite little characters from this demo, and here you can see her final design and concept. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, she was such a challenging little character because she's covered in fur, and she needed to be very cute and appealing. And uh, she also was a character that we really lent into authenticity on. We, we, we reference very closely the actual sheep that were in Israel. It's a special breed called, I think they called Awasi sheep. 
Um, and yeah, so the, we found that the closer we went to the real sheep, the cuter she went. Um, and you can see here some footage of us holding a beautiful little lamb uh, in Israel. Um, and yeah, you'll see how the this character was so pivotal in getting David's relationship and softness of character across. I don't know if you want to speak about that, Brent. Um, no, but yeah. yeah, I think that's, that, that's, I think you just said it there. Carry on. Yeah, so yeah, you can see some of these key little moments that were sketched by our artist, really trying to nail the connection between David and Tali. Um, beautiful little moment, and this is just some more explorations of her character. Different uh, yeah, different emotions that she would go through. Even though she's not a human character, she still needed to be able to really express those character, those feelings. And here you can see this is actually a little breakdown of that runaway sequence where David scoops her up. Uh, it was actually drawn by our character artist, who was also a 2D animator as well. So had such an amazing grasp of movement. And now we move on to the sheep, who are also just wonderful characters and you can see some of the reference footage uh those sheep can we just pause herders, here? Those I shepherds just wanna, i want to tell a little story yeah just to tell a little story here so we went to um israel on the research trip and we knew that the the short was going to have sheep in it and our producer um at the time joe pistorius said to um one of our art directors mark chittenden he's like just make sure you get some really good reference of sheep so we we've been driving around a couple of days obviously there's a lot to look at we kept seeing sheep quite far away and at some point we like we actually need to stop and find find some sheep so we stopped on the side of the road and we saw some sheep up there and mark just sort of instinctively he looked at the sheep and the shepherd that was leading them and he he went walked down and just sat on a rock and in a couple of minutes the sheep had all walked down and we're walking around him he was amidst them this footage is taken with them walking all around him and it was just an unbelievable moment the fact that you know this was a specific thing we were sent to do we hadn't been able to do it and he just felt he he, he kind of just read the moment went and found his spot sat there and waited and these sheep just all came around him. i just stood there i was like and <laughs> i was i was so bummed because i was just so amazed by all of this i was like as they started walking away, I was like, oh, I should be taking video too. And I sort of quickly turned on my thing and started, but they had already started. But fortunately, he got the good <laughs> stuff. So it was wonderful. Yeah. And they had some big guard dogs that were growling at us <laughs> as well. That was quite fun. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you can see how the the those reference images really pay off in just designing sheep that automatically just look so authentic to what we saw in Israel. Um, so these are just some of the fun sheep designs that were done. Um, and then we clearly we honed in on a very few of them. But um, here you can see just a taste of what goes into making a sheep that, that anything that is on the character has to be explained. You know, how far do the hooves move? How do they move on the landscape? Everything is made from scratch. So uh, concept art is often explaining so much. So those funny zones that you see on the sheep are explaining to somebody how long the fur needs to be so that they can create the fur in 3D and that it'll hang at the appropriate length on the body. So a lot of concept art isn't just making beautiful pictures, it's also creating art to explain uh, how something will work in 3D. And that's actually the bulk, that's the real job of concept art is 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 making everything clear and, and answering questions before they're asked. Um, so yeah, mm. so that's the sheep. And I think that's we can amazing. Move on that's to... a... Yeah, jump into the world. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the world that we created, and here you'll just see a few images that really uh, sum up the key references of the world, the, the stage that we were setting. And you'll see some of the early concept art as we explored what the space should look like. Um, just, yeah, we had some really world-class designers and this is some more of that explaining art, you know, uh, what's at the top of the cliff, what's at the bottom of the cliff? How are we gonna group these plants together to make them appealing? 
uh, what do the rocks look like uh, and how are we going to use them even down to how detailed is the ground you know you've got a photo at the top and then a, a softening of that reality but here is a really clear one this was our primary reference for the cliff and here you can see how massive it is uh, how tiny people are and this was our key painting to to really break the look of the set and yeah you can see it in the final such a nice moment so let's, I, just, and here's your thing. I just love that I love how you show going from photo to concept art to 3D. It's, it's amazing to see it. It's incredible. Thank you, Phil. You can go back a little bit just to see that again. This is the, the level of reference that we went into. You can see Brent doing a bit of a test footage there as he climbs the cliff, and you'll see it, as, it actually flakes off. And we use that moment in the film. Um, as David is climbing down, we actually reference this as he falls. Um, and then the, and I the was last nearly part of the, as high up as David. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> and just just to mention a little hectic thing is like we went back to this exact spot in a later no, trip to Israel. <laughs> I have to. And there was a whole rock slide in this exact area, and. Uh, so we couldn't have done it then, but it was just amazing and really thankful that the rock slide didn't happen while we were there. <laughs> um, so yeah, and the next phase you'll see is color keys, and I'll start talking about that ahead of time because it's a, a you know, a, just to explain it. Um, color keys is where we get our first glimpse at the lighting at the film. So here you see the whole of the short, but represented in a few uh, little loose paintings. But these are our, our roadmap to the the mood and the look of each shot in the whole short, um, and it really helps us track. So we want to do we want to figure this out as early as possible, and the best way to do that is with these little loose paintings. Um, yeah, so those are color keys, and I'm not sure what comes after this. <laughs> so after this, we're going to go to we're going to go to music. Okay, and so we're going to hand do. over to. Yeah, to fill yeah. in brand. I was just going to say, so for those watching, we're going to just dive into a bit about the music on this um, demo, and then Brent, maybe you could talk a little bit about afterwards about music and its role in the film. But I just want to quickly say about these color keys, Linton, that they're so crucial in yeah. telling a story. There's so much that goes into telling a story, not just what's happening, but the way you influence mood with color and music and camera angles, it all accentuates the message or the moment in the story. Um, so these color keys are also key to storytelling out of interest. But let's jump onto the music because we've still got quite a bit to get to in this live stream. And then Brent, you can, you can chat about the music at the end of this little video. Yeah, well, let me, can I tear it up before we go into it? Maybe just, just hold a second yeah, before, tear, tear before up, we go there. Because yeah. um, um, what, I, what I wanted with the music, um, music, David, sings a little lullaby to Tali as he's bringing um, as he's bringing her back to her mother and I briefed and this is um, I briefed Jonas Myron who's um, was the, the the songwriter on this um, and I said I'd love it based off of Psalm 23 and I'd love it to actually be in Hebrew um, though the movie is going to be a musical and we'll have a lot of um, sort of I'm going to say Disney-esque musical numbers and English sing-along but this one, I was like, no, what, what would a, a lullaby to his sheep have been, you know? And so Jonas wrote this incredibly beautiful, um, I'll call it a lullaby, of Psalm 23. And the, the composers of the score really latched onto that and used that to build uh, their soundscape from as well. So I think the way that you're going to see it here is um, you'll hear David singing it. And then you'll see the um, the orchestra that we got to play it. But just see if you can notice the the refrains from David's little lullaby, sort of echoed in the grand score. Um, yeah, that's that's my my preface, and we can go into it. I think. Yes, 
ינחני במגל צדק למען שם I just absolutely love this part of movie making because it's the one so obviously composing the music takes a while but when when that when it's all written and they put it in front of the orchestra and the orchestra all plays and it comes to life it's so immediate <laughs> compared to the rest of the animation yeah. journey you know so to get a to get one shot out it's got to go through so many departments you know animation like modeling uh, rigging texturing fur lighting you know all these things uh that take but then when you get to music everyone gets in a room and magic happens i just i absolutely love it and um and speaking just a little bit into the movie i'm so excited by the fact that this is going to be a musical and furthermore excited by the fact that there's a actually a, a story reason that there are songs in the movie thank you summer for the hundred dollars there um you know david was david called himself israel singer israel's singer of songs he wrote more than half the psalms so it only makes sense that uh music would be a part of the telling of his life story um the very reason that he actually went into saul's palace was because saul needed someone to calm him to to play and sing for him and calm him so so the wonderful thing for me and that the challenge in writing the film but a, a wonderful challenge is let there actually be a story reason that there's a song rather than just breaking out into song while he's doing the washing or or something like that you know like actually there's a story reason that he sings uh, and and of course they'll from that sort of initiation or the instigation of a story moment it'll it'll break out into a into a a much bigger number that everyone will get involved with but it's just a, a great challenge and something that i'm really looking forward to to bringing to life phil what do you say mm. joseph that was great. Goodness, thank just, you for, <laughs> for that ten thousand yeah thank, thank you joseph i've got another message just to say that during this live stream there's been 131 thousand dollars going into the buffer already which is just incredible um wow so so that that's amazing um We've, we've got very exciting guests coming up, so I'm just going to wrap this up, yeah, but just to say, um, <laughs> does the lamb necessarily have to be this cute? <laughs> but, yeah, that was such a quick whirlwind tour through the demo and what goes into making a film. Um, but the music side in particular is just going to be massively exciting on this movie, as you say, Brent, because it's so authentic to David's character and who he was. And like we've said on a few other live streams, if they can make a musical on P.T. Barnum's life, um, imagine what you can do out of David's life. It's just incredible. So, um, yeah. So, yeah, Brent, did you, I saw you were about to say something before we move on to the next part. We yeah, gotta... well, there, there was a question that we, we can't ignore it. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to discern, is the question tongue-in-cheek? Did you have to make it so cute because, oh, or like, did you have to actually make it so cute? Um, and I, <laughs> yeah, does that necessary? have to, so I'll answer it, I'll answer it both ways. One is if if it's a tongue in cheek question, then you know, of course we had to make it so cute. But the if it's if it's a question, sort of quite a serious question, there was a very interesting thing that happened while we were creating the demo, and we must remember that we're operating in the space of animation, where um, we're, we're going for broad appeal um, and and trying to really um, reach a wide audience. To yeah. start with, David was rescuing a sheep, and um the the there were a number of people in the in the crew that were like i don't like him you know he he, he just doesn't appeal to me 
And I was like, why? He's such a nice guy. And they're like, yeah, but he's just too perfect. He's this and that. And then I did a, did a version um, where he was rescuing a lamb. And they said, oh, I like him now. Literally like that. <laughs> not, not much else had changed. Just the fact that he was rescuing a lamb. And it was mainly the, 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 the woman um, in the crew just suddenly had much more of a heart towards David because he was rescuing a lamb. Um, and it was just really interesting to pay attention to that. And I was like, well, okay, if, if, if the decision between rescuing a sheep or rescuing a lamb brings in a wider audience, then let them rescue a lamb. You know, um, and and there's, it's cute because like lambs are cute, fundamentally and intrinsically. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we've had so many. Yeah, thanks, Christy, by the way. For that too. We've had so, on every live stream. Tali has just become one of the favourites um, of the show. So it's. I think she's going to be a great part of the the journey. But um, one other little thing, thing to you. say, which I which I'll say because it actually also was a key moment for us. When we were designing it, we actually did go too cute, a little bit too cartoony cute. Um, and we've got a yeah. great friend of the show who, who was really actually um, pivotal for me and my journey in directing was Glenn Keane, who is a legendary ex-Disney um, animator. And he's not attached to the project. He just sort of offered advice um, out of the goodness of his heart and just followed our journey. And I sent him some of our lamb designs and he wrote back, he's like, Brent, those are cute, but are they authentic? Do they live in the world? Mm. You know, he's like lambs. Lambs are the most gorgeous creatures, and that's that's what helped us again go back to our research to go back to look at actually lambs um, and redesign it. You will have seen in that video there was a a phrase, um, Linton. What was it? Redirect or I can't remember. It. Course yeah, correct. redirection. Yeah, course correction. Yeah, um, it, it was a course correction that happened because we'd gone quite far down production. And we got these notes from Glenn, which really resonated. And we were like, no, he's right. So um, a, a lot of thought and discussion went into that lamb and, and is ongoing, actually, even as we go into the feature film. It, it hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> That's amazing. No, but uh, Brent and Linton, thank you, guys. Uh, you are uh, two gladiators on the journey with us. And I re really appreciate you both. And thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we, sure. We're going to move on because we've got some other guests joining us. But, yeah, thank you, guys, and really cool. appreciate Thanks your so time. Much. It's been great. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks so much for having us. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Yeah, Cheers. Yeah. Cheers, eh? Um, to everyone on the live stream, before we welcome our next guests, who are the Ohana Adventure family, I just wanted to say something. In Acts 13, verse 22, it says, I found in David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And one of the reasons we wanted to tell the story is because if we can tell David's story beautifully and well and well crafted, I think it gives people a glimpse of God's heart, this adventurous, expansive, kind, beautiful personality beyond imagination of God. Um, but the one word I want to cue into tonight is adventure because I love adventure. Personally, I just love adventure and that's how I connected with God is I realized he was a God of adventure. He wasn't just a a boring, stuffy character. He was this incredibly expansive, wild, adventurous character, also incredibly kind and gentle, but this this, um, this amazing blend. Um, and so for me, growing up in Zimbabwe, I was saying there's one place, and we'll talk about it shortly, on the Zambezi River, where you could canoe for four days, five nights, and you'd not see a human being, just elephants and buffalo. And it was out there in the wild and having adventures that, that I really connected with God for myself. So tonight I'm very excited to welcome the Ohana Adventure family because their name says it all, the Ohana Adventure family. So I just think they're such cool guests to have on and they're supporting the show as well. So without further ado, maybe I can welcome them onto the show and, and we can just start to engage with them and have a bit of a chat. So welcome to the Bennett family. Sheesh, guys, welcome to the show. Thank you. Yeah, can you do, a, I don't know if it's, there's so many of you, can you quickly just run through your names for us though, um, each of you, as, so, so people know who you are. Okay, I'm Rachel. Jace. Claire Lea. Raquel. Shay. Wyatt. Evie. Cora. <laughs> Yo, you guys are so cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
I just, I just love the spirit of adventure in your family. You guys are just so cool. I went on and looked at some of your YouTube, and it's just so amazing to have a family that's full of adventure. It's, it's so cool. Maybe I could just kick off by asking you guys, what, what's been your most exciting adventure to date? And I'm talking about not what you've enjoyed the most necessarily, but what's been the most adventurous thing you've, you've done as a family? And anyone can answer. Whoever's first. That's a uh, question. I think when we went to Africa earlier this year uh, was probably our most adventurous because um, besides some of the fun things that we did, like uh, we did some rappelling, we got to see you know the safari, but it was such a different culture. It was great to see a different part of the world and meet the people. And in that sense, that part is like really exciting for me. I love that. I think the craziest oh. adventure we got stuck up on a mountain in the middle of China and monkeys were about to attack us. That was probably the craziest adventure. <laughs> <laughs> and, and were you all there on that mountain? All, all, all of you? Yep. yep. <laughs> Lockdown, Gondola wouldn't open down the mountain. And so our tour guide was late. We knew the mountain better than he did, uh, sadly. And we had to beg literally and plead with the employee to open the gondola machine back up turn it back on so we could ride down the mountain <laughs> that's incredible and jace maybe you could just tell there's some viewers who don't know you guys obviously some of your fans are on the show there's many people who don't know you guys so can you just tell me what you're all about i mean i've read a little bit about some of you the, the kids in particular and i see there's filmmakers you know your oldest daughter clay loves travel books singing is so but you as a family, what, what inspired you to go and take on this adventure? Um, and then tell us a bit more about you guys, where you live and, and what your mission is. So we decided, we were doing, I was doing YouTube, gosh, 2010, I was uploading YouTube videos for one of my businesses. But then my wife in 2015 started doing family content because she wanted to prove that big families are cool. <laughs> because everyone thought, oh, big family, that's crazy, that's a hassle, how do you even, like when we go to the airport, it's like Moses, everybody parts, and we just walk through, because everyone goes, oh, I can't imagine traveling with that many kids, but our kids travel better than those adults that are judging us on the sidelines, and so it was just so people that families can have fun together, that parents and kids can interact, that you can have close adventures you can have very far away adventures that you can do anything as a family and make it fun. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Eh? When they always, yeah. I was going to say to you guys, like, so I believe you guys live in Hawaii. And just so you guys know, if, you guys know geography well, but if we took a knitting needle and put it through the globe, Zimbabwe, where I was born, um, could not be, like, is literally on the other side of the globe to you guys. Um, so, <laughs> The one thing I want to say tonight is I hope one day you're all going to come visit us and we're going to go for a canoe trip in Zimbabwe down the Zambezi River. Um, so you, uh, you've now got a friend. You've now got a friend in Zimbabwe. Hey? So please remember to remember that. The other thing, um, Jace, we were just talking about, we did uh, four trips to Israel because part of the David movie getting to that is we really wanted to be authentic and for it to be grounded in... Um, you know, having traveled there, eaten the food, listened to the music, sm smelt the rain and the air. Um, I believe you guys are planning a trip to Jerusalem soon. And maybe you could just tell me a bit about that. And I believe you've been as a family to Turkey as well. What's inspiring you guys to go to Jerusalem? And what inspired you to go to Turkey, for example? We love different cultures and experiencing them. And because we, we call it world school, because we were not just homeschool, but we world school, it gives us an opportunity to see and feel these cultures. And then from the homeschool aspect, teaching. We love to learn about the history of, you know, what happened in that country. Um, and I feel like it helps us relate to people, not just where we're from, but all around the world. And our idea is to, you know, become more world-rounded, I guess, well-rounded, as we learn about the different cultures. And so going to Turkey was such an amazing historical experience as we, you know, went through the old ancient cities, 
and even the more modern series we got to talk to the people. But I think we're really excited about Israel because of the biblical nature of itself and learning about, um, obviously, you know, walking the paths where, you know, Jesus walked and, and, you know, like you said, smelling the rain and being in the presence of where these many great stories, you know, happened. I just want a really vivid Bible in the morning where we can talk about it. We're like, okay, so Paul, so the silver merchants are right here. Remember those shops when we were walking right there in Ephesus? Yeah. Okay, he was here speaking. He had to go out here. And so it allows us to touch and feel. It's very spoiled, and we understand that. But we're trying not to be spoiled rotten. Just spoiled. We're okay with it. <laughs> so I wanted to ask, which one of you is Shay? Because I believe Shay wants to be a storyboarder and character designer. Is that you, Shay? Tell me, Shay, what is your favorite animated film you've watched up to date, and, and who's your favorite animated character? Um, I gotta say 100% Lion King is my favorite movie. <laughs> and then... And, and who's your favorite character in Lion King? Hmm, I gotta say Mufasa. Hmm. Okay, cool, eh? Ah. Got Lion King, what an... What an epic animation, eh? And it's just, it really felt authentically, it had such a beautiful African spirit to it as well, which I, which I really loved, eh? So yeah. that's amazing. And Clay, Clay, I believe you're the oldest, and I, and I read that you love travel and fashion, eh? So um, what is the most favorite place you've traveled to, by the way? My favorite place that I've traveled to would probably have to be Tiki. I like the sun and the warmth and the tropical. <laughs> <laughs> I lost you for a bit. Sorry, but I, so just say it again. I missed you. Um, I think my favorite place would have to be Tahiti because it's really tropical. Okay. And <laughs> okay. And then Ra Raquel, are you the second oldest, by the way? Yeah. And and I believe you like what I read is if to correct me if I'm wrong, but you like books and singing, so you must. You must love David because he's he was such a musician. Are you, are you a songwriter or do you just like singing or, or both? So I think that's actually a little switched up. She is the one that loves to sing and oh. actually is one of the guitar now too. So she is more of the singer of that. Okay. Cool. <laughs> no, good. It's good. To, and then Wyatt, I believe Wyatt wants to be a, a film producer as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Man of many and, words. And what, yeah, that's cool. Well, to be a producer, you don't need to say many words. So that's a good, that's a good trait, by the way. Um, <laughs> should we dive into, into David? I mean, for you guys as a family, just tell me anyone can speak, but what do you love about David and what do you think his life has got to give the world in terms of, yeah, just his life and who he was? I'd love to know why you guys like David as a family and, and what you think about him as a character. I think um, David is the epitome of the underdog. Um, you know, this small, small guy that comes and basically conquers, you know, Goliath. And I think that's kind of the hero that we all want to relate to, as I feel like a lot of us personally in times of you know trial or you know hardships we feel like the underdog and we want to you know overcome that fear or overcome that trial and i think he's just so relatable in that sense that you know we want to grab onto something and be the hero that we can or see ourselves being yeah i love that i think he's so accessible to everyone isn't he the way because we've all got giants in our lives we've all got big things we've got to take on and, and I think his life is so inspiring. Eh? The other thing, just talking about the musical side, for me personally, I love it. When you read his psalms, I just love how he's so honest with God. He just jumps on God's lap and just talks. Um, and I think th that's an incredible example for all of us, just how beautifully honest he was with God and how expressive he was with God. Um, yeah, but any, and anything else from anyone else in the family that you like about David, that you think the rest of the world would love to learn about him as a character? I really like his shepherd feel, how he's so intact with the mountain and wilderness and all the beautiful goats or sheeps. sheep. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Lambs. <laughs> I don't know how 
shows his daring side, how he is willing to risk it all to go sh save that lamb. But then I also love yeah. how it shows him really funny and goofy. I like how it shows multiple sides of him. Yeah, that's cool. I love that. There's a very cool thing, like you're saying, when he was going to fight Goliath, he said, you know, I fought the lion and the bear. And so he was he had already walked with God and fought the lion and the bear. And you guys have been to Africa. I, I mean, I've watched a couple of times a lion charge across the Zambezi Valley, and it's an incredible sight, the power of a lion. And to think yeah. that David fought a lion and a bear, it's, it's, it's incredible, you know. <laughs> so, and, and just going back to what uh, Shay was saying about him being out in the wild, I read a beautiful thing of Eugene Peterson that said when he went to the Valley of Eli, he'd come from the wild, he was so connected with God, and when he went into that Valley of Eli, he had a God-dominated imagination, and everyone else had a Goliath-dominated imagination. And I think, like you are saying, Shay, he got that from being out under the, under the stars and connecting with God. And that's why I love you guys as a family. I think all the adventures you're going on and seeing and hearing different things is connecting you with God and his character in a, in a beautiful way. Yeah. Um, so, sorry, you were going to say... Oh, no, I was just saying thank you. Um, I, I think, like, that's definitely part of our mission as, you know, we try to bring family goodness and family content out to the world as we adventure in, and adventure in our home and out. Um, that is actually one of our family goals is connecting with God and, um, you know, bringing him more closer to ourselves as well as, you know, our family. So I love that. Yeah. That's incredible. Can I ask the two younger members of the family, and if I got my facts wrong, please just tell me, but uh, Evelyn and Cora, is that your names, by the way? Uh, yes. Um, my name is pronounced hey. Evelyn or Evie. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's cool. And tell me, I read both of you like soccer, and, and you like dolphins, and uh, Cora likes puppies. So I want to ask you guys, did you like the little lamb on the demo? Yes. It's super cute. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. And um, I'm sure you get a lot of dolphins in Hawaii, but obviously we've also got a lot of dolphins here in South Africa. And I'm on the coast at the moment, and today we saw a massive um, school of dolphins. So you'll have to come to South Africa as well and see the dolphins here. Um, do you get a lot of dolphins in Hawaii, by the way? Yeah. They're seasonal, so that it would be like, more winter so like right now into like march i guess a little bit more their time unless you get offshore quite a bit then they're they're always there whenever i go fishing they uh they're so smart they'll steal the bait right off the hook while we're fishing and <laughs> it always makes me nervous to catch never ever ever have i caught a dolphin but they have probably taken at least a hundred plus times my bait so yes dolphins <laughs> They frustrate me. <laughs> and, and another question for you guys. Uh, do any of you surf, considering you all live in Hawaii? Are you surfers, any of you? <laughs> so that's cool because, as I was saying, I was born in Zimbabwe where there's no sea. So one of the sports I love to watch is surfing. I'm not actually a surfer myself. But the one thing I was thinking about surfing is that... God creates the waves and we ride them. Um, and when I watch you guys as surfers, I was just thinking, it's not our job to create the waves, but we've got the joy of riding God's waves. And yeah, this David movie for me is like a wave that God's creating. And um, it's going to be very cool to surf it with you guys as, as surfers, by the way. Surf the David wave. Um, yeah. So, no, I just wanted to say from my side, I know you guys have partnered with us on this David movie. It's such an adventure, and I love to have adventurers like you guys on the journey with us, and surfers like you guys. That's so exciting and cool. And I am really mean it. You guys are welcome to come visit us in Zimbabwe and in Cape Town. And I think you should put it on your map after Jerusalem as one of the trips, uh, Jason, Rachel. I think it's, we a, it's a destination. I, oh, we, would, we would love to meet with you and, and come and visit. We'll come and give an update. And uh, do some videos yeah. and do an update and take a tour. That'd be amazing. Yeah. And honestly, when you go up to Zimbabwe, the studio is in Cape Town. Then we can travel up to Zimbabwe. And in Zimbabwe, when you get to the Zambezi, there's no game fences. It's just 
lion and elephant and buffalo and hippos in the river. It's it's so wild and beautiful. Um, and you guys will love it being an adventurous family. Yeah, yeah. Um, Done. But we're just going to... <laughs> but thank you guys so much for joining us on this live stream and for, we'll keep in touch on this adventure and it's so cool to have an adventurous family like you with us on the journey you guys are an amazing family by the way um, and really my, my parents were passionate about family keep connected as a family family is the building block of society and of God's kingdom um, and I love what you guys are doing as a family I eh? thank you for, for blessing the world and for being who you are it's amazing yeah so thank you, thank you guys for, for joining us yeah. and get put together. We're very excited. And we'll see you guys in Zimbabwe and Cape Town, hopefully in the not too distant future. Yes. Okay. Thanks guys. I really appreciate you joining us on this live stream. Thank you. Yeah, thank and you. And thanks yeah. all you guys, all the children. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Thanks guys. <laughs> Cheers. Eh? So for those of you on the live stream, yeah, what an amazing family. And it was so cool to, to have them because I think they really capture the spirit of David and adventure. And yeah, so to the Hana Adventure family, thank you so much for joining us. It was really, really special to have you guys. I think we just want to end off and say we've come to the end of a chapter of raising this five, five million dollars. But I think what Brent was saying earlier, I'd like to reiterate the five million dollars is one thing, but the group of people who've joined this journey and this story and this adventure, up there I can read it, 6,488 people. And for me, that's the power of this, the Angel Studios model, is that we build communities and then through community, is, there's so much power in community. Um, so the $5 million obviously is a resource to help get the films made and progress on the journey. But looking at the 6,500 people, it's just so exciting to have you guys as part of the David family and part of the adventure. And we really want to say thank you. And, and we're excited to keep connected with all of you who've invested and journey with you. And like any journey and adventure, it's got, it's like I was saying the other day, it's like ships are safe in harbor, but that's not what they're built for. And as we sail out of the harbor, we will hit stormy seas, we will hit big seas. But we're a team, we're a community, and we'll go through it together. And I, and I really want to give a shout out to the Angel Studios um, group and family because they've just done the most incredible job of turning media on its head. And if we look at what's happened with The Chosen and other projects that they're working on, it's just reinventing the way things are done, the way films are financed, the way they are done through building community. And then the power of that community and distribution is just so beautiful and incredible. Um, so as we reach the end of this chapter, what excites me most is the 6,500 people that are part of the journey now with us. If you want to look, you can go to angel.com slash David. Although the offering is closed, there's still a few hours left. And whenever they close off the offering, there's always, they've got to process all the money and some of it doesn't actually fall, come through. So we're allowed to build a buffer of $500,000. So if you invest in the next few hours, um, thanks Megan uh, for the dollars. That's really appreciated. If, if you, it's first come, first serve, we'll obviously, as people, if, if their finance doesn't work out, we'll put you guys through. Um, and if for whatever reason we, we can't, then we'll, we'll re refund your money. And then keep tracking this journey because we've not finished yet the, the finance raise and next year we're going to carry on. Alexandra, thank you for investing the $500. Really appreciate it. Um, and Stephen, 500 thank you guys. Hey. And if you don't manage to get into this offering this, this, this year, please keep an eye out because we're going to be moving forward next year. We're going to open another pledging phase next year and keep a watch out for that. This is going to be the most beautiful and exciting and adventurous story. I just want to end off by saying why are we making this film and just remind us that for me, it's an, for one, obviously David's just the most incredible, one of the most incredible characters in human history to tell a story about. There's just so much fun and adventure and energy. But much more than that, going back to that Acts 13, verse 22, it says, I found in David's son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. And I think if we can tell David's story well, it's going to be so powerfully take God's heart to the world. Um, so I just wanted to end by saying that and thanking you guys. Thank you for the community that supported us so far on the journey. Please watch the space. Keep looking next year. You can go to our Facebook page. You can go to Instagram. And end off again by just thanking Angel Studios for being the most wonderful partner on this journey and on this adventure. 
We're going to close there, but I just want to say thank you and thank you, God, for joining us and being the person who's actually leading this whole vision and, and leaving, leading this film to where it's going. And yeah, we'll end off with a little video that just talks about the David movie. And yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for joining us. It's going to be a beautiful journey together. Have a good day in the US and we'll connect with you all in the new year again. Thank you and good night and good day. What if there were a Bible movie that was as powerful as the Prince of Egypt and as fun as Tangled? That's about as likely to happen as David beating Goliath. See what I did there? Well, it's happening. We are making an epic David and Goliath animated film. David will be an animated feature film that shows the power of the David story with the humor, music, and adventure of your favorite animated movie. With your investment, we can bring David to life with the production quality of a classic animated film while revealing God through one of the Bible's most powerful stories. Did you see that? Anyone! A group of filmmakers in South Africa called Sunrise Animation Studios has been carefully assembling the right team to make David. This David project has already generated $19 million in investments and inspired some of the world's leading animation film professionals to leave major Hollywood studios and be a part of this story. The Sunrise team includes senior contributors to movies like Moana, Monsters, Inc., Soul, and Big Hero 6 as well as Grammy award-winning composers. Basically, David is the answer to the question, what if the best Bible stories were told by the world's best animators and musicians? Click the link to learn how to invest in David today. David tells the story of a young shepherd who gains fame as a musician and a warrior for the king. I'm trying to protect us from this Philistine. He shows the viewer what it truly means to be a man after God's own heart. David is the original underdog that has gone on to inspire the greatest underdog stories of all time. Don't believe me? Just re-watch Harry Potter and Star Wars. Instead of using magic or the force to defeat giant villains, David uses the power of God to overcome a literal Goliath. And he reminds each of us that we're the underdog of our own stories. And through God, all things are possible. David's story has never been told on a cinematic level. And to accomplish that, you need a combination of a good budget and good storytellers. The faith community has the right storytellers, but most independent Bible films look like independent Bible films. But with your investments, combined with the storytelling prowess of Sunrise Animation Studios, we are finally telling David's story in a way that belongs on the silver screen. And did I mention, it's a musical. <laughs> So beautiful. The creation of David the movie is a Goliath-sized story. Sunrise knew that in order for a small film studio to make an epic movie on par with the big boys, they'd have to nail it between the eyes. Pun intended. And after all these years, they've assembled the right team to go the distance. All that's missing is you. Click the link to watch a small teaser we made for David. David will be distributed by Angel Studios, the same film studio behind the smash hit success The Chosen, a TV show about Jesus that has over 300 million views and has generated over $100 million in revenue. Sunrise Animation Studios created Jungle Beat, an animated brand that has a feature movie on Netflix with a sequel in production and gets 140 million monthly views on YouTube. Ooh. If they can do that with a monkey and an elephant, imagine what they can do with one of the most iconic figures of all time. When you invest in the animated film David, you're not just helping to create an epic animated adventure based on one of the most popular books of all time. You could actually share in the profits. Of course, we can't guarantee that you'll make a Goliath amount of money, but we will say the Prince of Egypt made 218 million in revenue at the box office, plus two decades of DVD, TV, and streaming sales. David has everything the Prince of Egypt has, like powerful songs and breathtaking animation. And one thing it doesn't, this baby lamb. You do the math. And aside from the potential financial return, bringing such an important story to life can be incredibly rewarding. Hi there, my name is Phil Cunningham, and I was inspired by this character and thought if we could tell an animated feature film around the life of David, it would inspire people to take on the giants in their life and to live bigger, braver, bolder lives. David has the chance to be the next big movie that every kid, parent, and Pixar fan will fall in love with. Click the link and invest today.